Who ordered the Titans first? Or were they born that way? First one's Primus, or shouldn't be all creatures have free will in the first place? It's an Organon. It's an Organon. I'm sure it is. Amonthul sees what is to come, I think. I think he knows the truth of what will happen. I think Norganon's the overbearing order. I think he perhaps even stole or overwrote primordial death or stole death's power of order, perhaps, and then used it on the Titans after they died to Sargeras. And I think perhaps even using Argus, who is pumped full of orderly death, to regenerate their souls, which I'm pretty sure is what was happening in Antorus the Burning Throne, a Titan facility. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's what was happening. That may have exposed them to these death energies even further. I don't think that they all take a constellar form by accident. I think that uh, Norganon is responsible for that form. If you guys don't know, after, after Sargeras slays them, Norganon somehow weaves this spell, bending the fabric of the universe to his will, which sounds like domination, by the way, and sh shrouds the Titan Pantheon's spirits and sends them shooting off into the cosmos. We're led to believe in Chronicle that the Titan spirits went to Azeroth, but they did not. A message went to Azeroth, letting them know that they had fallen and that they must rebuild the final Titan. So, when I see things from Argus's memories from 1,000 years of war, the audio drama from Legion that says that Argus was bound and betrayed. It was bound by something powerful and that the, it was suffering immense pain and that they used its power to revive their fallen souls. Brahm and Thule to tell Raden, to tell, to tell Ra that they had fallen and that they must rebuild the final Titan. I think that it's rather clear perhaps what's going on. And there is a possibility that the Titans came to realize that something was fucked up or that they knew they started to get inklings of it. And they started to perhaps even break free and defy the will of Norganon, who specializes in command. Uh, but I think their orderly constellar forms are, are part of their imprisonment. And this is why I think that entities like Amonthul and Kazgaroth and Agromar maybe aren't bad guys, but maybe they've been made into bad guys. Or maybe they accidentally made themselves into bad guys by using this darkened fragment of Azeroth to basically rebirth themselves and... and a, or maybe they're inherently of its essence and creation already. You know, maybe Argus is the father of the Titans and they overthrew him uh, and stole his power of, of death and order and, you know, now have fucking used it to, you know... There's a possibility, though, that, they, that they've, re, that, again, that they've architected, perhaps subtly so, maybe through manipulating the mortals, Sargeras and Amonthul in particular, and Ionar, perhaps in manipulating the mortals, they've architected Azeroth being put back together. And I think that there's a possibility that what Sargeras was supposed to do is raise his blade and cleave the shit in half. There is also, like I said, the possibility that they realize that they fucked up or that something was fucked up and they had to figure out how to put Azeroth back together. But I like the overbearing, oppressing nature of it and the concept that they're not all bad. They're not all bad, I don't think. And hell, that none of them, none of them might be bad. They might all just be adhering to their edicts. And what is their edict and where did it come from? Good question. Perhaps it's given to them by Azeroth. Perhaps it's given to them by Argus. Perhaps they rewrote their own edicts in, so, in a place like Zareth Ortis, if that's real. But I think that at least one of them, and that is Sargeras, I think is not bound in the same way. If Sargeras stole part of Azeroth away from her and the Titans forced Sarg to re-inject Argus, well, how do you get a soul fragment from a, from a being? I think you kill it with a Mornblade, right? and then the sword will consume it. But inevitably, it will also consume you. The same way that we see it do to Sargeras, even if it doesn't appear at first glance as though it is a Mornblade.
And perhaps there's yet another layer to this that I'm not understanding. Perhaps the flesh doesn't belong to Argus, but even one other alternative. Flesh is his gift. He is your true creator. It could be talking about Sargeras. That would be fucking interesting. God of mortals. Perhaps mortal himself. That would be interesting. Anyway. Why is the sword different looking in the Antorus cinematic? It's not. I've shown you guys this before, so stick around before you miss it. Because I show it every single day on stream. I'm gonna show it again. Light be with you. Give it a story. Fucking yoke, bro. So you see this? This right here, what you're looking at, is part of Gorshalak. Gorshalak as a weapon is not what you think it is. Um, Gorshalak is a figurative weapon. This image on the right of Sargeras being dominated, and make no mistake, he is being dominated. He even has domination runes on him, so there's really no point to argue. His sword indicates and is the same thing as what you see on the screen. It's this crescent shape with seven seats. There are seven gems here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. With one large one in the middle. The large one in the middle, which is bound in a ring of titanic domination runes, is Argus, the main power source of the Mornblade. Remember, when they forged Anduin's Mornblade, King's Morn, they had to use a soul fragment to make it. Remember, they used Arthas. In the case of the domination of Sargeras, they're using Argus. Argus, Arthas, they're standing in a ring of runes. I'd also like to point out that in the same art, you can see that Norganon back here is wielding the discs of Norganon, which have the very same blue runes on them. If Argus is, not this, is on the seat at the moment of the beam, how can he be in his sword? Because they're channeling a giant beam of energy that's focused through Argus into Sargeras. So I think what is implied here is that in some capacity, and I think that this is uh, illustrated also by the mythic version of the fight, I think that Argus's energy that's being used here, if, look, let me put it this way, I think that Sargeras's sword may have already been transmuted out of Argus's body, okay? And that a new body was built for him, so Sargeras might be wielding Argus's flesh as a blade, okay? Let me let me just put it that way. Um so there's like a soul and flesh link already. There's a soul binding through the blade that Sargeras is wielding that's already occurred, I think. But what's what's happening here is they're using remote domination on him. Now, I don't know if he has any free will or if he's aware at this point. We contrast this with the Anduin Rin cinematic. But I'm getting a little off track here because I read fucking chat when I'm trying to explain things. The point I'm trying to make is that this seat of the Pantheon is undeniably utilizing a similar mechanism as a Mornblade. It is using the same soul uh, concept. It's using the runic binding concept it's the same shape it's even aligned the same way for god's sake and i'm sorry but when you look at sargeras you're not going to tell me that he's not dominated in this art if you are you're fucking denying reality you're literally just denying reality if that's the case he's holding a mourn blade for christ's sake but what i'm trying to imply is that the sword is not the sword is not, uh, how do I put this? 
It's not literal. It's 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 like meta it's metaphorical. It's a super weapon that's used remotely. You know what I'm saying? And so in this through this mechanism of domination, they plan to control him. And I think that you know, in the past, we've seen what that's resulted in. Because he's also clearly dominated here. As he as you can clearly tell. And he's holding the Morn Blade yet again. Sick. Good website. So. The thing is, though, is that due to his exposure to Azeroth, I'm not so sure that uh, he's completely unaware or has no semblance of free will. I think that it seems to me that Amon Thule uses the time collapse spell on Argus in the fight to rewind Argus to his most primordial chaotic form. This is the energy that Sargeras perhaps then transmutes into the blade and stabs into the heart. Uh, thus kind of putting Azeroth back together. And in this way, this could be what the Titans meant when they said we must rebuild the final Titan. It's a brutal way of doing it. But maybe they realized that they fucked up and needed to put her back together. I just kind of don't think so. I think that that makes more sense as Sargeras's plan in that their intention to rebuild the final Titan is they were rebuilding Argus as like hyper orderly death and they were going to fucking rewrite the cosmos with it. And Zoval was their primary plot through which they would accomplish that, which is pretty fucking insane. But uh, I'm pretty sure that's what they did. So... The Shadowlands is a huge Titan ruse, and it was all just a trap for mortal souls, and they were trying to order the universe with it. And Azeroth and, and her champions, us, stopped them. So has Azeroth already said that Argus is part of Azeroth? Has Blizzard, pardon me, already said that Argus is part of Azeroth, or is that just our speculation still? Um, I mean, in my opinion, it's not speculation, but it's not confirmed. So I guess it has to be speculation. But I don't know if you guys realize the logs here the kind of Asgaroth, further prove it. Let me show you. The of the Forge has relayed information from the Pantheon about our purpose. A light-based message, by the way, first of all. To create order from the chaos of the cosmos, the Titans search the great dark beyond for the prime world soul. This world soul, the most powerful... See how it's got existence. blue and gold? They would guide to become the greatest titan of all. See how it's blue and gold? In time, they came to sense a mighty presence within the world called Azeroth. Mostly the gold Pantheon here, but still some blue in there. Their way to the nascent world soul. Hoping that their search was at an end. Let's let me show you something further. Let me show you the next one. So in the first one, you guys saw Back it was blue and gold. Home. So just keep watching. The old gods. In time, we rooted out and defeated the threat, imprisoning its last vestiges in the deep places of the world. Then, led by Amon Thul himself, the Titans set towards studying the soul. Blue and gold Azeroth, still? He's got white eyes here. It fucks me up, dude. I don't like that sought. at all. I really don't like that. By word of the great Kazgoroth. The Titan's research has revealed that Azeroth's world soul is And now, is it's just gold. Prime. You see that? Where did the blue go, chat? Be fulfilled. What is the blue? And where is it? Enormous, powerful chunks of world soul essence. Do you think Belladar they took something and out of her? Them? Potentially. I believe it was her but heart. Was never within the scope of our her heart is a crater, crystal. and we have filled it. He mentions the Titan Forge making the Coreway. Did you know it was built to study the world soul? 
We were created for the great purpose of serving the Titans, and thus we built it. Its purpose was irrelevant to us. It almost seems like the old gods fulfilled our could have been keeping her alive. And we have strived to do so not the other way the around. Millennia. The Black Despite Blood and Algar the empires they gave rise to. It's setbacks. And what we're told about it's such setbacks. a fucking lie. What do you mean? Long ago, the they replaced her the blood, they replaced her apart. heart. And the machinery that powered our fucking machinery was damaged. Cut off from the manifold. That's why Sargeras aimed for... To repair the connection. That's why he aimed for Silithus. People are like, oh, he was aiming for Cthulhu. No, he was aiming for the fucking heart. It ran out. And it worked. <laughs> and we fell into... Disarray. He stabbed her in the fucking that heart. That must have been the sundering. Put the essence it's in the blood. Spread it instantaneously throughout the whole system. 